Lacey here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my weekly deck reviews. So this week I am going to be talking about my experiences working with the This Might Hurt Tarot by Isabella Rotman and the Awakened Soul Oracle by Ethany Dawn. So I just want to dive in because I love both of these decks a lot. So spoiler alert, I loved them. I wasn't really expecting not to love them. Can we talk about this Peggy bag match though, like for reals? Oh, oh, that was less exciting. Hold on. Bottle! Like how perfect is that? This actually is really funny. I probably told the story last week. Oh well. If I'm telling it again, I'm, I'm sorry. But <laughs> I was helping Peggy take some photos of these bags when she sewed them up to put in her Etsy shop. And as I was taking the photos I had grabbed my This Might Hurt Tarot deck to put like with whatever bag she was we were photographing that time and I was like oh it's such a perfect match and then I got really excited and then she had less to sell because I stole one as I do regularly anyway the This Might Hurt Tarot deck by Isabella Rotman was a kickstarter this deck feels like an old friend and I don't know how to fully describe it but let's talk about like just the quality of the deck itself really nice sturdy box it's my favorite kind it's a clamshell or a wrap style box with a magnetic closure here the box is beautifully gilded with each of the four suits going all the way around it is stunning um the guidebook is a bit of a chunk oh here's what the inside looks like we have the white rose from the death flag from the death card the oops the guidebook is a little chunk which is nice and it has um this is like a small feature but i think it really matters there's a little fold built in along the spine so that when you open this thicker guidebook it has a place to fold so that the pages stay in i'm pretty sure this is a glued binding so it's really important to have that little fold because it helps when you're flipping through to you know not wreck your book so the book is really really good there is a full page of not insignificant amount of text it's a little bit small print um which didn't cause me any trouble and i do need readers soon i think so that's saying something it is small but i just had to hold it a little bit away and i was good <laughs> um or you know actually put my readers on like a not lazy slob so there's that <laughs> but i really love this the descriptions are really long they're really thorough and it's very conversational and you can definitely there's even some spots where I can't remember which card but in at least one of the cards Isabella Rotman legit quoted Melissa Sinova from Kitchen Table Tarot which I thought was fantastic because I really love Melissa's writing style there's also a neat feature in the back of the book that I stumbled on where she put decks I was looking at while I drew this and I thought that was really ethical for one really smart um, it just it's like okay these are decks that may have inspired her and I think this is interesting because I think with art you can end up inspired by something and not even really recognize where you got that inspiration from and I think rarely is there an intention to copy something but on the off chance that there's something people go oh that's familiar she's fully credited what might have may have inspired her and I think that was really pretty cool. There's of course also a bibliography where she talks about what tarot books that um, inspired her as well. Of course Kitchen Table Tarot is listed here as well as the guidebook for the Sassari Bito Tarot um, and Cassandra Snow's Queering the Tarot and just like a bunch of other great stuff. Love this. As far as spreads I don't feel like there was anything but I think three card spreads in here so I didn't really try to play with those too much. Um, and there's a wonderful bits in here on gender in the tarot, a bit about each of the types of the court cards, and just, it's just a really delightful little guidebook. This deck, I think, would make a fantastic beginner deck. The guidebook is not overwhelming with how much information you get. There's not a lot of esoteric language. It's very plain speak, really accessible. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And the deck itself has this gorgeous holographic um black edging which is absolutely breathtaking oh oh can i get the rainbow to show up oh there we go there it is there you go it's just beautiful um the backing has all four elements 
listed or uh, suit symbols on it. You have your daggers, your cups, your wands, and then the pentacles are in the corners of each card. And I just love that we get this really full figured woman here in the middle of this Ouroboros, uh, reminiscent from the, the world card in this deck. The art and the coloration is everything. Some people say this has a cartoonish vibe, and I guess it does. It has uh, some, some some people had left comments saying they thought this had kind of a graphic novel feel. It just it does have what I feel like is just a really accessible art style. It doesn't feel overly high vibe, but it also doesn't feel too grounded or heavy. It's it's right in that middle space where it, it's approachable, and I think. Any client could easily see themselves somewhere in this deck, which I've mentioned before. I love reaching for this deck for clients. It's actually kind of hard now for me to reach for other ones, at least lately. And for sure, when I read in person, this will be in my kit because I just think it's just so, such a wonderfully diverse and accepting and approachable deck. It reads like a dream. I don't have to think at all. Um, that sounds weird. I mean, obviously I think, but like when I lay out the cards, they speak right to me. There's, there's little, it's, it's not a stretch. None of the cards are a stretch. Everything's right there. I have looked at all of these cards over and over again. I did a very in-depth walkthrough, which I rem if I remember, I will link up in the cards. And the, the symbols just pop out effortlessly at me. The colors pop out, the, the scenes and the emotions and the energies of the cards just pop out easily into my mind, into my attention. I don't know how else to say it. It's amazing. Amazing. And I just, it's probably going to always be close at hand. It's just a deck that it just feels very me. And I love that about this. So yes, all the many stars of the stars. I don't really rank, rank things by stars, but you know, 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5, A plus. <laughs> Big fan. The oracle deck that I was working with this week is Ethany Dawn's Awakened Soul Oracle. Now, I believe she is just about to release the second edition. I don't know when that's coming for sure. The guidebook in this is really, really great. The cards have um, excellent meanings. I think that if I remember correctly, there was a typo, like a repeated card in the guidebook somewhere, but for the life of me, I could not remember, and I didn't, it wasn't in any of my draws this week, so I didn't really run into it, but I feel like there was something about that. Um, I can definitely take a more thorough look at the guidebook if anybody's desperate to know, um, but I didn't have it come up, so. What I like about the Awakened Soul Oracle guidebook is that you have just a ton of information. You have an Awakened Soul story, which describes what's happening in the actual artwork of the card. You have an Awakened Meaning, which is your message or your, you know, your, your meaning of the card. Then you have Shadow Meaning, which is just a small section down here. And, and I appreciate when decks do this because sometimes if you recognize that a card is coming up as a potential blockage or you recognize the theme of the card is something you struggle with, reading the shadow can help you to sort of take a different look at it and see what it might be trying to teach you. And then there's an affirmation and a personal reflection, which can be used as a journal prompt. So for example, in the Shapeshifter card, the keywords are instincts, illusions, deception, camouflage. And the personal reflection is, what signals does my body give me when I need to pay attention? That's a really potent journal prompt that you could totally explore. Some people like to use reflection prompts like that as meditation prompts, which can also be really useful and really powerful. Love. The backs of these cards are great. They just scream Ethany. This is her, um, her B that I associate with her decks and her creations. It's got a really nice shiny silver gilding which has held up really well and I shuffle this pretty hard. I'm a rifle shuffler. My deck has just a bit of a bow from being shuffled. It's barely a deck that I can rifle from end to end but it is big so keep that in mind like my fingers stretch and I can get a pretty good mix. Um, it's really nice. I like it. I didn't talk about the cardstock on this might hurt. It's Beautiful. Love it. Matte. This one is a bit of a satin cardstock. So there's a little bit of a sheen, but it's not like a high gloss. Shayla. No, no, no. <laughs> My dog's about to like go bananas. Anyway, 
The artwork is really colorful. I love this one with the lanterns in the background. Uh, she's like, no, shh, no. <laughs> Peggy's gonna be like, no, no, no. I love this one with the lanterns in the back. There are some really fantastic themes in this deck, some wonderful diversity. This was a dream next to This Might Hurt, and I cannot think of a single Oracle deck in my collection that would have worked better next to the diversity and the sort of modern feel of This Might Hurt. I can't imagine pairing it with anything else. Maybe next time I use it I'll feel called to use something different, but this one just feels like the right one. And so they're kind of married in my head now, and we'll have to see if anybody else can come to play. But so far, it just this just feels so beautifully connected with that deck in a way that I found really cohesive. They read really well together, and I just really enjoyed working with the both of them. I'm kind of almost a little sad to put them away this week, gotta say. So... That is my experience with the Awakened Soul Oracle. Really beautiful messages, very balanced, a lot of really good stuff here. I think the Awakened Soul Oracle would be really wonderful for guided personal work if you're working on personal growth, if you want something that feels like it has a gentle uh, guiding sort of hand or guiding energy, this is really good for that. And Anthony does have a Awakened Soul Challenge in here that lets you work through the whole deck. I believe it lets you work through the whole deck. It might just be a 14-day challenge, actually. Let me just take a look. I haven't done it. Um, the Awakened Soul Challenge. It says, I want to say it's like, it might even be 10 days. I should stop talking until I know. 13 days! <laughs> I was wrong on all counts. Um, a 13-day challenge. And there are, it's like, it's almost like an Instagram challenge. There are 13 daily prompts that you use with the deck. I think that's really clever and I think it'd be super cool if people did that more often because I think that's really neat. And it's great as a bonding activity with decks. I bonded with this so well right out of the gate that I haven't felt like I really needed to do that, but it is cool that it is in there. The reading cloth I used all week, although I don't think I took any pictures for Instagram, <laughs> but I do take a picture actually every single day of my daily cards and I journal them. So I have a little mini photo printer, I print the photo of the cards that I pulled and I journal about them daily. So I do think that having a good photo um, is helpful to me. So this is what I put behind all of my cards this week. It actually has a really super cute sort of patchwork owl on the other side but it's all this like crushed wine colored velvet on this side and it was just perfect behind the colors in those cards. It looked great. So I really enjoyed that. Here's what I'm gonna be working with this week. So it's a bit of a tricky one, this one. So the tarot deck I'm gonna be working with this week is the now out of print, I think, tarot fauna. It may still be available somewhere, but I, I know that they're not reprinting it, um, to my knowledge, so that is this one. This is by Devin Strickler. The artist is Brittany Burkhard. Um, I got this this March, and I anti-hauled this deck. Well, in the sense that I said this is one of the decks that I regret, because I just hadn't been able to connect with it. But I really, I watched, um, oh, what's the channel name? I watched a walk through this deck. I know this channel name so well and it's literally flying out of my mind. I'm gonna link it in the cards because I'm sure I have another card. And I'm, I, Cosmic Creeper, oh my God, that was really bothering me. Cosmic Creeper does a lot of animal work and when I watched her thorough walkthrough of this deck, it just, it made me really wanna give this one a second chance before I decide to rehome it. I am, one of the things that I am super enchanted with about this deck is that each suit has a family of uh, a particular animal. So through the cup suit you have this family of river otters, the wands you have foxes, the um, swords you have owls, and the pentacles you have bears. And you know I feel like I didn't sit with this deck very well the first week that I worked with it and it just it didn't resonate. I, I felt like it fell flat. I think partly I was influenced by the guidebook, um, which is digital, and I think the guidebook I didn't really love, and I think because I didn't like the guidebook, it kind of tainted my image of the cards a little bit. So I want to this week work with this slowly and intuitively and see if I can really dig a little bit deeper because I 
really love the gentle and playful kind of energy of this deck and I think it may very likely be one that I regret if I rehome it and that's what I need to find out this week. So I will be working with this. This is what the backs look like and they have, I'm pretty sure it feels like, yeah it's a linen finish cardstock so it's flexible but sturdy and nice. Linen finish always shuffles like a dream. So yeah that is what I'm working with and I don't think this is the bag it was in originally but this bag I think used to hold a different deck and now it holds this one and I think it's really a beautiful match. So if this stays in my collection it's staying in this bag and if it doesn't I'll find a new deck to live here because this is a beautiful bag and I am pretty attached to it. <laughs> the Oracle deck that I decided to, oh, I thought I lost it. <laughs> the Oracle deck that I decided to work with alongside this deck this week, my nose is itchy, always, is the Earthbound Oracle by Skull Garden. Uh, Andrew, I think is his name, Swartz. I just got this finally. It's been on my wish list for forever. I did a walkthrough first impressions of this deck alongside the Pathfinder Oracle, which was a recent Kickstarter. This is what the backs look like. This deck feels very in touch with the natural world and I'm just really excited to work with this beside the tarot fauna and just see what I think. I don't know how well aesthetically this particular deck will go with the tarot fauna but I'm excited to work with this and see just how it plays. I have a very strong suspicion that this is going to be a great intuitive reader for me. I'm really looking forward to it. The cardstock is really like smooth and sturdy feeling but not overly thick. So I feel like it's going to shuffle really well. Actually I think I've shuffled it already. Oh yeah, shuffles like a dream. Love it. So I'm going to play with that and we'll see how these two get on together and we'll see how I get on with both of them this week. I'm right now my prediction is this one, winner, and the tarot fauna is a maybe, a totally unknown because again I don't feel like I gave it a fair shake last time. The reading cloth I'm going to use with both of these is, this one's so cute. I don't know if Peggy has more of this fabric but I just fell in love with this one. Um, but look, it's just a little guy, but look and these little critters, there's like this little, I feel like this is either a bear cub or a fox cub. I think it's a little fox cub. But look at how cute with like the butterflies and this like sort of golden sunny afternoon kind of kind of feel. I just, I think this is going to be really cute with those decks. And it's got like a yellow, this side is like a yellow fabric. It's actually got a pattern. I can't tell my viewfinder if the pattern's actually showing up, but it's got a really subtle, cool, crisscrossy sort of wavy pattern. So this is the reading cloth I'm going to work with this week. What I do actually, in case you have cotton reading cloths like this or if you've ever bought a Peggy cloth, the trick that Peggy taught me for these is because I like to fold them up or wrinkle them up, like ball them up and throw them in my bag before I go to read, like take pictures or anything because I'm a little bit fussy about wrinkles, I lay it out and I mist it very lightly with water, like very lightly and I just hand, I hand smooth it, right? And it sits there for just a couple minutes and it's ready to go. It's like all the wrinkles have relaxed out of it. It looks beautiful and I hate ironing. And also I often do my readings like first thing in the morning when I don't want to be fussing with an iron. So anyways, pro tip in case you have cotton reading cloths. So that is it my friends. I would love to hear what you guys are working with this week. What is resonating with you right now? What are you feeling called to work with? Are you enjoying the decks you've been playing with lately? Are there hits? Are there misses? Let me know down below. Remember to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you want to book a reading with me, you can do that at supportoftarot.com. Thanks so much, you guys, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye!